at the corner of 76th Street and 5th Avenue in Manhattan. There are three hot dog stands. The last time I was there, I bought drinks at one of them for several days. And one day I realized that I was always going to the same one. I even waited in line for the one, although there was no line at the other two. Being inquisitive, I asked myself why I was subconsciously drawn to the same guy, although he had exactly the same products, water, Coke, Gatorade, etc., as the other two. And it was simply because he seemed friendlier than the others. The other two looked grim and impatient, as if I would be inconveniencing them by buying some water. This called for further investigation. I sat at a nearby bench for a full hour and counted the number of people who made a purchase at each of the three stands. I wanted to know if it was only me or if whether there was more at work here, the three hot dog stands being a microcosmic representation of all business. And sure enough, the happy hot dog seller outperformed the other two. In that hour, he sold to 25 people. The other one on the same side of the street sold to 11 people, and the one across the street, 14 people. In other words, no matter where you look, you'll see the law of attraction at work. I write about it here because some of my students have no confidence when I say, don't focus much on business, sales, and marketing. Focus on improving your own energy and identity and look at the law of attraction. The three hot dog stands all had the same marketing. They all looked the same, sold the same items, and were at the same location. Whether they had the same prices or not, I don't know. I didn't care. I had chosen my hot dog stand based on subconscious attraction. Not to completely undermine your belief in marketing, it does belong in any successful business. But there's more going on in the semi-invisible realm of energy. If you have looked into marketing, you've probably been told that the key to your success lies in putting ads in the paper, getting endorsements, building a presence on social media, running Google AdWord campaigns, optimizing Google rankings, crafting landing pages for your website and increasing their conversion rate, getting more traffic to your website, engaging in direct mail marketing, phone marketing, email newsletter marketing, etc. When business-oriented students ask me about these things, I say that I really don't care much about any of that. I say, good marketing is marketing that's not recognized as such. I'll write a good article that helps someone. That's good marketing. It's not recognized as marketing because, by the conventional definition, it isn't. If your product or service are good, people will be as naturally and effortlessly attracted to it as those people were to the hot dog stand. If someone endorses my work, then it's not because I paid him or her to do so, but because they really like it. Knowing the higher source of your wealth is no invitation to rely on that higher power to fix life for you. Pay respect to where all riches come from, but do not mitigate responsibility for your life. Source helps those who help themselves. Develop self-determination and self-sufficiency. You are responsible for your reality. By the time you've finished listening to this audiobook, you'll be richer. Would you agree? Your answer to that question shows whether you are in the reactive world mind or in the creative soul. Most people would answer, I don't know if I'll have more money or not. They are waiting for the world to decide, but the world will not do anything for you. Nobody will. To have more money, you have to decide to have more. That's a decision you have to make. By the time I'm done listening to this book, I will feel stronger and more optimistic about my financial future and also will have more money. That's why you bought this audiobook, right? So it should not be too difficult to decide that. Or did you think a book could make a decision for you? Now, some will object. It's not just a matter of me deciding. Circumstances have to be right. That may or may not be true, but without you deciding, the probability of you having more money is close to zero. Making decisions requires courage, especially if there is no current evidence of your decision coming true. You know what's going to happen if you don't do it. Nothing will happen. Reality starts and ends with you. The rule of physical inertia is that things pretty much stay the same if there is no conscious effort to change them. 
probe within yourself to find the determination to create a better reality independent of whether anything outside of yourself works or not. Take control of your reality. Instead of waiting for someone to send you money, you could go ahead and dress like someone who is rich today. Talk like someone who is rich today. Walk like someone who is rich today. You'd have taken control of what energy you radiate. And whatever you radiate in time will radiate back to you. That is guaranteed. Any sort of anguish at all points to the fact that you don't really believe that outrageous abundance and richness is everywhere and all around. You are part of a vast field of energy that contains everything. Lack is an illusion. How long are you going to believe that you are lacking something before you wake up? If you don't believe me, you may believe it if Jesus says it. From Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why do you take thoughts for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothes the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if the meaning of this is not yet clear, allow me to add my own comments. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Don't worry about the basic survival needs of life. They are a given. Too much thinking about them tends to block the unlimited stream of abundance. Is life not more than meat and the body more than raiment? Not the physical universe is essence. The spiritual universe is essence and source. Change first the state of your soul and your relationship to the real essence, and all else in your outer state will follow. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Humans are worthy and deserving of being provided for and fed. If you are truly yourself and quit trying to be something other than you are and contribute your unique talents to mankind, you will naturally align to the river of abundance. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Worry does not add one iota to your being. Worry is pointless. And why take you thoughts for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And just like the lilies of the field blossom happily and without hardship, so can you. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Even if you gather all the external riches of the world, alignment with the vast universal field of abundance is better. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? If you are living in lack, that is because you are of little faith. Increasing belief will increase your abundance. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. 
being worried about how to pay the rent implies that you're not part of the ever-flowing rivers of richness. Let go of that. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Get your priorities straight. First, seek that which is infinite and everlasting. Seek an aligned, peaceful, and strong inner state and a relationship to the Most High. Then do what you do. Two vital quotes from my book and audiobook, Prosperity Consciousness. Don't judge the day by what you reap, but by what you sow. And who makes the most of what he already has will get more and more with less and less effort.